notebooks. For data engineers, data analysts, and ML engineers, notebooks are something that they use almost every single day for all sorts of different use cases. And now you can run those notebooks natively inside Snowflake. This means you don't have to move your data around, manage infrastructure, or even change existing data permissions for all of your various objects in Snowflake. Now, what this also means is that you can build your data pipelines, your Python applications, and AIML workflows seamlessly and natively within Snowflake using Snowflake notebooks. Now, getting started is easy. Let's take a look. As an administrator, there's three things that you need to do in order to get started today and enable your teams and organizations to use Snowflake notebooks. And that is you need to have some roles within Snowflake that have the ability to both run and or create notebooks. What I have here is a simple setup that shows a few things. One, I'm using the public role. This is a system default role that is on uh, every Snowflake account. And so, but you can also swap this for a custom defined and custom created role. In this case, whatever role you choose needs to be able to have usage on the database and schemas that the notebooks will live in. And lastly, if you want them to be able to create notebooks, grant that role the ability to create notebook on that schema. And note, important note here is that if you're running a notebook that uses container runtime, where with container runtime, you can bring in your own custom models. You can uh, really anything that is not inside of the Snowflake Anaconda environment, you can bring in custom working code running in a container. And so with this, where you can grant create service on schema, specifically here, create service, that allows them to create that container runtime. Now, next, the other thing that you'll need to be able to, whichever users are going to access your notebooks, need to have usage for a warehouse. So I have this here as well, grant usage on warehouse. And this is, again, you can specify any number of warehouses, any size of warehouses, um, and you want to grant that usage on whatever roles you want them to use it on. Now, again, if you're running this in container runtime, you'll need to specify some compute pools for those containers to run on. In this case, I've shown a couple different examples here. One is for a, a CPU extra small with uh, a set number of nodes, um, minimum and, and maximum. And I've also shown you how to create a compute pool with GPUs. So this, in this case, I'm using, you know, minimum of one and maximum of five. And I'm see, so I'm creating the actual compute pool, but then again, I'm granting usage of that compute pool to that role. So these are the various elements that you'll need to grant usage on to specific roles that you want to be able to either run or create a notebook. And another important note here is that whoever actually runs a notebook, those results stay private to that specific user. And this is done by design because of features like dynamic mask, dynamic uh, data masking, where you have uh, potentially you know, social security numbers or email addresses, where depending on the specific role that is querying the data, the results may be masked in some way. And so you wouldn't want a, a saved or cached result viewed by another user that has access to that notebook, but doesn't necessarily have the same level of access to the underlying data. So that's important. And lastly, I want to go over external access. There are tons of notebooks out there today that call an API or, uh, or push data to an API or call an API to perform some type of action. This is actually a really cool use case with a scheduled notebook. You're ingesting through a massive data pipeline, a bunch of data. You're crunching that data and doing some automated analysis on that data, maybe with large language models using Snowflake Cortex. And you're doing it all within a Snowflake notebook. Once that compute is done, maybe you want to actually take action on some IoT device and tell it to either turn on or turn off. 
Well, with external access, you can do that all within a notebook environment and automate it through a scheduling all inside Snowflake. So it's a cool, cool feature. Now let's actually look and see how to enable that and how to grant the right permissions for the different areas on the internet that you want to grant access to. So in this case, I'm essentially granting access to everywhere. So th this is this is the definition for both HTTPS and HTTP ports. So in this case, I'm creating a network rule called allow all. I'm specifying the mode of egress type of host port and the value list, again, showing that it's essentially anywhere on the internet, uh, as long as it's these ports that I'm going and accessing. And then I, so I create or replace that external access integration um, using that rule that I defined just above. And then lastly, again, you, you, the, the very common uh, grant usage on to that role that I'm specifying for the users that are going to be using these notebooks. So in short, what we just did is we enabled our team and organization to both use notebooks that may be already existing, but we've also shown how to specify who can create notebooks. We've talked about how to create the various compute pools um, and computing resources needed to run those notebooks. And lastly, we covered external access, the ability for these notebooks to call external APIs and get some response back or take action on your data outside of Snowflake. So where do you go from here? Well, you should do two things. One is check out the various notebook tutorials on quickstarts.snowflake.com. We have a huge number of different tutorials here talking all about how to get started with notebooks in general, how to build ML models uh, with Streamlit and Snowflake, uh, all within notebooks. Um, even how to use PyTorch with, with notebooks or Llama, uh, Meta's Llama model within notebooks. A good, a very good number of step-by-step -step tutorials complete with the source code to download from GitHub and more. And lastly, check out snowflake.com slash developers and specifically the Solution Center. This is one of the newest things here at Snowflake where you can get the full end-to-end -end experience uh, from forking the repo, viewing the quick start again, but also watching the demo itself played out by a Snowflake expert here, um, hands-on. So again, my name is Daniel Myers. Thanks for watching. See you next time.